Is it starting? It is starting. Okay, okay. there we are. Okay, okay I'm Sandy Ostrick, and uh, my friend Simone is chief photographer here. Uh, <laughs> the only photographer here. Uh, and I have a checkered past. Um, I'm 80 years old, and in that time I have uh, been a, an elected official, minor office, and a nurse practitioner for 35 years, a nurse for 45, and um, I have written internationally distributed pharmacology reference text, a thousand pages long, mm. co-authored, co um, and um, I'm bioed in Feminists Who Changed America, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the most important thing is I'm a, a happy wife and a mom, and uh, they're the driving forces in my life, I try to make life better for them. So, um, when I started out, if you're interested, uh, I started out um, as kind of a loner, kind of a one on my own kind of wavelength person. And um, right away I began to see that when I looked at things, they weren't quite fair for everybody. Right away when? Right away in first grade. Ah, you were mm -hmm. I'm first grade. I forgot this was an interview. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay, you? Um, yeah, and uh, they zoomed me right away out of first grade. We didn't have kindergarten those days. Mm. Um, into second grade. I'd never mm. finished first grade. They just zipped me along. And um, my dad was in the Coast Guard, so we moved from... Uh, let's see, I was born in Lowell, Massachusetts, spent six weeks there, and from then on it was coasts around the country, mm -hmm. uh, where the Coast Guard was, uh, all up and down the East Coast. Uh, by the time I was done, before I was married, I'd lived in 13 states. Wow. And um, went to school and uh, had a ball, uh, mostly uh, majored in everything in school but studies. But I did really well, and I wasn't doing well in bio, so all of a sudden I had to sit down and study mm. biology, and I got enamored with it. That's why I wound up being a nurse, I think. Was this in high school? High school. College? That's mm -hmm. high school, yeah. Late high school. I think I was flunked because of bio, but mm. I was able to pull out and get a, an A out of that. Wow. Um, so mm -hmm. then I um, met my wonderful Charlie, who was a German, a German background as I am, but I've got some Scotch and French and a little bit of everything. Uh, but he's purely German, and he had certain ideas about um, women and their being in the kitchen, and there were defined roles. Oh, really? And I just kind of didn't buy that, didn't like to cook, never liked to cook, still don't like to cook. And um, so we, uh, you know, came to terms on that, and uh, uh, right away, then right after I graduated high school at 16, I started into college, and my dad said, we're not going to waste any money on a girl on college. So I took myself to Queens College, which was free, hmm. and um, spent a year there became a cheerleader for Queens, Queens College, College in, in New York, Long Island, New York. Yeah, this was, we uh, moved from um, several states. My dad uh, retired and so forth. Uh, the Coast Guard, and we wound up in Long Island, New York, where I did my, the rest of my high school and college one year, and met Charlie on a bus, and uh, it was just like that was meant to be. I dropped my ever attentive boyfriend at the time, and uh, Charlie was my darling from then on. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, smart guy, and uh, is still somebody that I always wanted to marry, uh, somebody that I could talk to uh, over a table, because I saw too many couples, older couples just sitting there staring past each other. Mm -hmm. So Charlie and I talk a lot, and we have great conversations, and I ask him about the, what we called those days in the 50s, I was married in 1952, um, that was called the double standard. We didn't call it sex discrimination. I don't think they even gave it a name until 71 mm -hmm. on that law case. 
Um, so then he, I, I dropped out of college and followed him with his uh, flying career. He had graduated then with an aeronautics degree and just because he wanted to be close to planes. And he did uh, um, work as um, a um, systems analyst on Long Island and continued till he uh, retired. And I did finish college uh, at Adelphi University in New York and went on to yeah. teach there and uh, got scholarships all the way through. But when I became um, a professor, uh, somewhere that would be in the 63, 68, somewhere in there, the what ERA was just starting. Hmm? Let me ask you a question. What, yeah. were you, what were you teaching? Nursing. You were, you know, so you were a professor of nursing. Yes, I, I went through be. nursing school and the associate degree jumped right into, um, uh, transferred into Adelphi University for your college mm -hmm. and got scholarships and got scholarships through grad school and started on a PhD, excuse me, EDD, and uh, didn't finish there because we moved to Florida after he retired. He got prostate cancer and retired and he's hale and hearty as am I. I see. Uh, but anyway, all along there I was just kind of um, carrying this um, stomach churning feeling that all oh, was not quite right with me. And that's why I went, originally went back to college when women didn't, married women didn't. Mm. And um, I was kind of an outlier there. But uh, one of my professors once said, oh my God, I've got the troublemaker in my class. And I was. Because the first question she asked, well, what about, what would you do about hospitals? It was a nursing course. And I said, well, first you burn the hospitals to the ground. Yeah. You know, and start again. <laughs> start start yeah. your system again. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what a rebel says. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and well, I didn't realize I'm a rebel because when we lived in New Mexico when my dad had TB, um, I, I mean, I never needed a lot of friends or anything. I just would go exploring. I'd mm -hmm. call it exploring. And I would also, uh, uh, you know, I played with boys and I played with girls. And it just didn't seem right that they got all the attention was what it really was. They were the focus of uh, everything, boys, as far as I could see. So um, when I started teaching, I began to realize and that's just about the time in 68 or so when I began that the Equal Rights Amendment stuff was getting to be hot. Mm -hmm. So the big push getting started. Yeah, and it was called the double standard. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear that phrase anymore. Isn't that funny? I'm, I feel so antiquated. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I hear it every once in a while. You Do know, you? But it's, um, it's for things that are like super obvious. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Like, there's obviously a double standard yeah. for women who are politicians. Funny that all this you stuff know. is so unobvious. And it's mm -hmm. so right there in front of everybody. But we right. women experience it, and uh, we just... Uh, I asked my mother when I was little. I said, why is it like that? You know, that the boys get preference on the, on the school grounds for their athletics, you know, and they don't even do as well in school, but the teacher calls on them and not us. You know, what's that? And she said, honey, that's just the way it is. It didn't set with me well. Mm -hmm. It didn't set with me. And I've just been an ordinary person all the way going through all this. It's just that I had this itch to make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, not just a difference, but this difference. And this difference was to bring gender equal treatment across the board to America, men as well as women. But women and girls, we really, really had it bad in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Even mm -hmm. though the ERA was started, and I marched in several states, and North Carolina, I think I remember, I flew down and, yeah, I flew down and I marched there. Can I ask you to tell sure. us a little about that? That about experience? Us? Yeah. Okay, when I came to North Carolina, now, which was very, very involved, of course, at that time in the ERA and equal, equality, which we still call equality. But I like gender equal treatment better because you could 
see it and taste e unequal treatment mm -hmm. quality. You can't. Kind of abstract. Um, yeah, so I went to North Carolina, and they there had us go through several different um, maneuvers to protect us against protesters that might try to harm us. Against well, protesters. That yeah. Oh, anti ER. Anti women. Yeah, right, yeah, and I sure. still get that, and you do yeah. too, I know. Um, uh, and the irony is, there wasn't anybody on the streets when we marched, let alone protesters. Oh, wow. Yeah, in North Carolina. <laughs> that was one of the later states, I guess. And um, so I was busy working and um, writing books and. Um, this is 19. This would have been in the. Um, that would have been in just as ERA had been passed out by Congress. Maybe it was about to. So 73, 74. Be, it might have been 73. 72. No, 70. More like 70. I yeah. Guess. And um, so it was pretty hot in mm -hmm. my circles. It was kind of hot, but I was out front with it. I mean, I just thought this is a no-brainer. There's no <laughs> way that we one half of the population, and now more than half the population, should be treated as second class, thrown under the bus, take second place, you know, when there's anything left, maybe you'll get it, you mm -hmm. know. So I said, no, that's not going to work. And, and continued. So during that period of time, then I was teaching, and um, I used to p paste on my door latest um, sexist kinds of things that were going on around America. Mm -hmm. You know, news accounts, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other professors who were almost all women, of course the man, the single male walked in, he got the corner office and 10,000 wasn't any of us. Mm -hmm. He had no experience. Um, no experience as a nurse? No experience or, in what he was teaching. No, he was teaching. I mean, he had not had a work experience in that particular area in nursing, right. to apply all that to nursing. I see. Um, but that's just an aside. Uh, but just to no, show but that's really how it was. You can, you know, you can, I was in a that's closet an with yeah. another woman as our office, and I had 250 students, and I was running a department with 20 faculty, and I had that meetings in this closet with this other woman. Mm -hmm. In our in our office, and he had the whole corner office. And he was a professor, but he wasn't the he wasn't chair, a, the leader. He, he of the wasn't. Department. He was brand new. He was yeah. an assistant professor. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's still like See, that. See, that's exactly yeah. the point. That's not an aside. No. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a pretty clear example. But I have used that particular uh, anger that I had at the time um, to work with uh, USF here in Florida. This, you're, this is taking place near St. Petersburg, Florida, in North Reading. And USF is? University of South Florida. South Florida, mm -hmm. okay. And a now friend of mine, Betty Castor, who's uh, very well known across the state, she was running uh, USF at the time. And there were uprisings about faculty, female faculty, and their low wages. And I got my, by that time I was president now, here. In Florida. Um, in Pinellas County, where I oh, live. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we got together and we wrote her a letter. And we said, you know, we're watching this and uh, we want you to be aware that, you know, what you're doing is not up to par, pretty much. I can't remember exactly what mm. we said, but we said it better. Uh, and eventually, um, with our work, the professors got equal pay at USF, the women professors. And um, a lot of other little things like that we did. Well, how did you, um, one of the things I'm interested in for this, for this archive is a little bit of the detail of how you did it, right? How? Because okay. it's hard for, it's difficult yeah, for people who right. don't do this mm -hmm. to imagine mm -hmm. how it's actually done. How mm -hmm. is advocacy done? How mm -hmm. is a thing like a university's pay policy changed by people who aren't part of the university, mm. or actual politicians, mm. um, because they don't. We don't well, see sounds, people do. We don't yeah, see how people we're do. We're skipping that. the, the nitty gritty. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. nitty gritty with a that was quite a while ago, huh? so it's come kind of hazy on the details. But I know that we all got together. And we voted that we would do this, 
And the interesting thing is that once we got started on it, another local chapter took umbrage that we were invading their territory mm. because the university was in another county. Sure. It never dawned on me that we women would be like that, but we are in many cases. Yeah. And it, it does not work well for us. It's certainly not solidarity. And uh, well, these days um, in sociological circles, they call it territorial thinking. Oh, yes, absolutely yeah. territorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's all, it's largely, I'm pretty sure, probably because we women have not had any power, and when we see somebody else having power, we feel a little bit bad and want it. And I, I think, yeah, I think that's it. The only power we have is, or have had in the past, is to um, link arms up with the powerful guys and get referred power, mm -hmm. which is much less uh, profitable or, or efficient for us. We need to step out and be assertive mm -hmm. and get our own. In fact, to digress a lot, <laughs> right at this point uh, in uh, 2015, I have been trying to get or an organization, any organization, a big organization in the United States to start offering, like we did in the 70s, assertiveness workshops. Because I am finding that women, myself included, way back, I mean, I don't recognize myself from before. I was like, just like everybody else. And I thought, well, that was the way it was. And I wasn't in the groove of, you know, you can change this. Right. You can change this. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, and when I discovered that, then I started working on it, um, you know, hard. And the more I risked, the more respect I got, the more successes I had. It reinforces. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's kind of a theme of that, you know, that um, women who do this work just have to step out one day and begin. And something goes right, and something goes right. Somebody and has keep to. going. I have know. a stupid phrase, but somebody has to get out of bed and clean up the vomit. <laughs> I mean, talking That's as a parent, true. you know, somebody has to do this. Yeah. And who is it? If if you're not happy, why are you sitting there? Yeah. Get off the couch. You yeah. can make a phone call. You can write a letter to the editor. Oh, they're so potent. A letter to the editor. All the legislators read them. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean... Where was I? <laughs> it's 2015. Yeah. Assertiveness training. Okay, yeah. And I'm looking for a, any organ. I've, I've approached AAUW and I got no response, but I'm working on them. Hmm. Uh, to not necessarily support it monetarily, but with publicity and so forth. Because I have found that women are agitated. Okay. I want their hair on fire. Hmm. And once it's on fire, people can be amenable to say, I gotta get out of this straitjacket, you right. know. And the way to undo it is start unbuttoning the straitjacket. Right. And that's kind of what I did all along. And you know what? Like I said, it didn't hurt. Um, the method that I use, one of the things that I use is that um, I say it in reasonable terms. Mm -hmm. In fact, I use that word. That's that's a special word when you're trying to get an idea across to a legislator or somebody who's sitting back like, okay, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is about abortion, ain't it? You know, um, it is to say it seems. No, it's not about abortion. No, no, it's not. Uh, it's about gender equal treatment across the board. Um, but, um, so what I would say is that this is, uh, what I'm proposing in gender equal treatment is, a, seems like a reasonable thing, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd be surprised how many will stop and think then. Isn't this reasonable, you know? Yeah, that, uh, it's a magical word. Yeah, and it, it, it has worked for me. Mm -hmm. So, let me, about the assertiveness, mm -hmm. let me ask you. Um, we, we learned that in nursing. I taught it there. Yes. That's where you see. Yeah, that's where it, it, uh, we, we had some readings to do, and I said, you know, that's what's missing here. 
If we don't stand up for our rights, we don't have any.